Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 14th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk a bit about Super Typhoon Mangkut, which is presently making landfall on the Northern Island of the Philippines as an extremely dangerous equivalent to category five hurricane super typhoon packing maximum sustained winds in the range of 165 miles per hour according to reports from the joint typhoon warning center and with gusts to around 200 miles per hour this strike to the philippines is just five years after the terrible impacts of Super, Super Typhoon Haiyan, which ripped through a similar section of the Philippines, striking a bit further to the south. However, this Super Typhoon is likely to impact 10 million people and the North Island's primary, primary agricultural region. This storm is likely is, is almost certain to produce catastrophic damage along its path. And as you can see right here, the eye wall is now in the process of crossing the shore of the North Island. The storm is expected to track just along the northern edge of the North Island, but is likely to bring far reaching impacts to this section of the Philippines. This emergency situation, unfortunately, is likely to produce serious loss of life and property in this region. I, I really hope that everyone has gotten out of the, the path of this storm because this is, this is an example of, of one of the most powerful storms that could ever occur on, on the surface of the earth with winds comparable to that of, of tornadic force in even the more extreme versions of tornadoes, but covering a region 30 to 40 miles wide. So, so very, very dangerous impacts coming from wind and storm surge flooding in this section of the Philippines, as well as, as heavy rainfall. Forces of nature powerful enough to level the best constructed structures uh, made by human hands. So, so a very dangerous situation now for the Philippines. Just like to note that the pressures for Mangkut have come down a little bit, down to around 906 millibars, according to reports from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. This is a little bit weaker, slightly weaker than Haiyan, but not by much, and, and is likely to produce impacts that are similar to Haiyan. It's worth noting that, as, as I've mentioned before, that Mangkut, I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom out here and take a look at some of the features related to Mangkut. That, that was a focus in on Florence. We're going to move over to the other side of the world here and look at Man Mangkut update to the present time. And... But it's just worth noting that the impacts related to Mangkut have been enhanced by warmer than normal ocean temperatures. Uh, I, before I get into that, I'd just like to show you this, see, the, this wave height graphic provided by WaveWatch 3, which is showing wave heights for Mangkut in excess of 20 meters which is in excess of 60 feet, extraordinarily high waves with this storm. So as I was mentioning, ocean temperatures, very warm ocean temperatures, have also been helping to feed the intensity of Mangkut. And we have sea surface temperatures in the range of one degree Celsius above average following the path of this storm. So this is after the storm has churned up a bit of upwelling. But just showing a few days ago, the storm emerging from sea surface temperatures in the range of two degrees Celsius above normal before it roared into the Philippines. Warmer than normal ocean temperatures are a primary fuel for hurricanes. And due to human caused climate change, the ocean surfaces are warming up 
and providing fuel for these storms around the globe. And as you can see here, sea surface temperatures in the tropical regions are above normal, as well as in regions that are likely to see hurricanes approach, such as the U.S. East Coast and along the Gulf Coast of the United States. So very dangerous storms being fueled by human-caused climate change and having their peak intensity increased as global temperatures rise into a range of one to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial averages. It's worth noting that both Mancoot and Florence likely ha well, have human-caused climate change fingerprints on their intensity measures, both in extreme windfall, low barometric pressure, in particular heavy rainfall with Florence, and likely the peak intensity of Mancoot as it makes landfall as a very strong storm in the Philippines and, and just five years after a major strike from catastrophic super typhoon Haiyan. So, so a very tragic situation, unfortunately, for the Philippines unfolding, one that has been enhanced by human-caused climate change. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.